participant attendees list and welcome to the round 2022-23-2023 State Infrastructure Programs Applicant Workshop. Um, today we're going to record this webinar um, so that you have uh, all the information you need as you go forth to fill out your applications for the infrastructure programs. Um, I'm going to do some uh, announcements and um, I am going to invite uh, the other skip um, uh, the, I'm sorry, the state capital improvement, the DOPWIC, the District One Public Works integrating um, team to the panelists, um, just in case we need them. Um, we do have a program rep at Ohio Public Works Commission, Nick Rose, and he had a conflict today and was not able to make it at last minute. Um, so if we have questions that we can't answer and need his input. Um, we'll find that information out and add it to our uh, website, which I'll show you how to find later in this program. So, and I just wanna thank you for taking the time out this morning. Many of you fill these out every year. Uh, this year is a very similar to the previous years and we have some um, just a few changes and I am going to uh, share the screen to start the program. Share. So all right. Um, I will tell you that at the uh, if you have questions feel free to use um, the chat function. Um, and then again, any of those of you in the panelists, feel free to um, unmute yourself and chime in. And especially if you see the chat and I don't, and then we'll also have time for Q and A at the end of the program. So again, welcome to the state infrastructure programs round 2022, 2023. The first announcement actually is about the nomenclature. We went from program year to fiscal year, and uh, this is round 37 of this program. OPWC, the Ohio Public Works Commission is uh, changing it and calling the round based on the year that the applications are received and the funding is released. So um, from now on, we'll be referring to the rounds with the two years. So welcome to round 2022-23. Today's program, we are going to um, review all the different uh, programs that have money available, and then a, a, an overview of the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee, and then the funding and eligibility. The second part of the program, we'll get into the specifics for, oh, that's supposed to be, say, round 2022, round 2023 application. We'll go over the application materials, the project evaluation and selection, We'll talk about the ancillary programs for small government and emergency. And um, then, like I said, we'll have time for questions and answers. So these programs are run through the Ohio Public Works Commission, OPWC. Um, for those of you that are not on their email mailing list, um, definitely get on there. They uh, send out information about the programs, um, highlights, and uh, any changes and news. So there's five basic programs the, through the infrastructure programs this year, and the usual, they're, well, they're all the usual suspects. So the State Capital Improvement Program is a combined grant loan program based on funding from general obligation bonds. The State Capital Improvement Program requires uh, that 10% of the allocation be used as loan. As the loans uh, are paid back, they go right back to the district. Um, and so those funds are set aside for a revolving loan program. And then there is a local transportation improvement program. This is a grant program for roads and bridges. And that is um, based on funding from uh, provided from gasoline taxes. 
So the Small Government Commission provides grants and loans to villages and townships with a population um, under 5,000. And projects applications are selected from those not funded through the 19 districts. So the, the this is a statewide competition and a second chance for those smaller um, communities and villages that might not be able to compete at the larger district level. So, and then, whoops, the emergency program is uh, OPWC reserves funding for emergency projects that arise directly out of catastrophic situations um, that threaten public health, health and safety. So, and we'll talk about how to access those um, programs at the very end. So, um, Cuyahoga County, we are District 1, and the district integrating committees were set up back at the onset of the program. And there are just a couple of the single county districts, includes uh, Franklin, Hamilton, and Lucas, and then other programs uh, are for multi-county. And, and each program uh, or each district uh, develops their own methodology. So if you're working for an engineering firm that works in multiple districts, you're going to want to go to their workshops or double check their websites. So the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee is made up of two members of the county and two members of the um, most populous city, which is the city of Cleveland, and two suburban representatives that are appointed by the Cuyahoga County Mayors and City Managers Association. And then those six members uh, elect or approve a private sector representative. And so again, uh, the members you can see listed here, they're also listed on our website and they will have the ultimate responsibility of selecting um, projects to recommend to OPWC. The allocation for round 2022-23 is 16 million for the SKIP grant, um, a little bit more than that for the SKIP loan, and the revolving loan program has, uh, I'm sorry, it's a 1 million point seven, a little bit over that 10%. Uh, the revolving loan program has a little over 5 million and the local transportation improvement program is 6 million, uh, 6.4 million. A uh, total uh, right now is 29,533. Again, this, um, these numbers change as um, projects close out. So it's definitely an approximate number and could change um, by the time you submit your applications. So skip the state capital improvement programs. The applicants, eligible applicants include counties. Mute. Um, can you hear me now? Can somebody raise a hand here? I can um, hear you now. Okay, thanks. Great. Thanks. Uh, so the applicants, eligible applicants are counties, cities, villages, townships, sanitary districts, and regional and water sewer districts that are defined by the Ohio Vice Code in section 6119 or 6117. So, and the projects that are funded through the SKIP program are the roads, bridges, and culverts, sewers, sanitary and storm, water supply and distribution, and wastewater treatment plants, and solid waste disposal. So the um, local transportation improvement program, again, these funds are the funds that are provided from the gasoline tax. So the applicants are um, fewer. It's the counties, cities, villages, and townships. And it only funds roads, bridges, and culverts. So, and again, even though there's two different pots of money with different um, eligibility, the application is very, very similar. It's the supplement that'll uh, be a little different. So the SKIP financial uh, assistance 
is um, if it's a repair and replacement project, which is usually the case here in Cuyahoga County, it's up to 90%. However, new and expansion projects are up to 50%. Um, loans are up to 100%. Um, there's 0% interest and the term is one to 30 years. It is really determined by the weighted useful life certified by the engineer in the application. But it, it is a, a very good deal. I certainly wish that my uh, house mortgage was 0% interest. So um, consider that we usually have a little bit more um, loan money uh, that can go out. Uh, the um, assistance can also go for debt support. Um, loan assistance offers grant funding that pays for the interest on eligible construction projects. Um, as well as credit enhancement for a one-time infusion of funds to enhance the applicant's ability to secure the affordable debt. The thing about the debt support applications, usually the projects are already finished and this, uh, these applications will be evaluated based on the pre-construction uh, condition and health and safety. So, um, Keep that in mind going forward um, and also make sure you have the records if you are looking back. Um, the pictures and the pavement condition reports or the uh, pipe uh, water um, main reports, that kind of thing. So um, the SKIP and LTIP eligible costs um, include the acquisition of right-of-way and or easements, engineering and design, construction, equipment, related financing costs, permits, advertising, legal. And um, please note that OPWC does not fund projects that are solely engineering and design. Some of you may recall a time when they used to do that, but that doesn't happen anymore. And that has to do because of the weighted useful life. There is no useful life for just the designs and engineering. You need the actual construction to be included in the application. So we're moving right along to round 2022-2023, the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee State Capital Infrastructure Programs. So. Um, you can find all this information on the current program year on our website, and you can reach our website um, through uh, this. I have the links throughout this, um, Pepper, throughout this presentation, which again will be posted on our website as well as this video, so you can easily find stuff. I understand that sometimes navigating the grant um, uh, programs were under services, um, might be hard to find. So um, round 2023, applications um, will be submitted um, via WorkWise, so PwC WorkWise, and we'll go over that in a minute, as well as electronically to the district. Um, OPWC requires documents um, must be included in the application in order to be recommended for funding. So um, what that means is if there's um, resolutions of support or cooperating agreements that you can't get before the application due date, which is in September, you'll have the time to get that. But if it's not provided into WorksWise by the time the DOPWIC is making their recommendations, um, OPWC will not take them. And then of course, the schedules, uh, the construction needs to begin by June of 2024. Otherwise, OPWC might tell you to um, take a step back and reapply. So the schedule is important as well. Oops, yeah. So, um, like I said, you must submit all application materials via WorksWise and one full digital copy via electronic sharing program. You can reach WorkWise either through the OPWC website or, um, and you can get the application supplement um, through our, the plan, Cuyahoga County Planning and the OPWC website. And then you need to, um, a supply supporting documentation for everything that you're including in the application. So the materials 
include the OPWC application, the DOPWIC application supplement, um, and the attachments. And these should be separated by a cover page. You'll submit this as a one full um, PDF um, document with everything in it. It's kind of large. You might have to use a file sharing service such as Dropbox or OneDrive or however you do it. Um, just make sure you get a, um, that I send you um, the receipt of, of that um, electronic copy. Um, and you'll need uh, authorizations and resolutions of support, agreements and letters of support, engineers estimates, certifications and plans, um, the supporting documentation and data for road bridges and culverts, or the supporting documentation and data for sewer, septic, water and wastewater, maps and photos. And if you are an applicant that is from a township or village with less than 5,000 people, um, please submit your small government checklist and make sure that you have anything extra that might be needed for small government. So the OPWC application is all done through WorksWise. Most of you were able to do that. Um, oh, page not found. Um, let's see, let's close that and, um, I need to see, what are you guys seeing right now? Are you seeing the Cuyahoga County Planning Commission or just the PowerPoint? No, the Cuyahoga County Planning Commission. Okay, well, let's go through them then. Let's see if we can. Uh, so here we are, state. If you go to current program years, application and forms, maybe we can get you to OPWC WorksWise. Are you seeing WorksWise now? Yes. Uh, excellent, thank you. So um, for those of you that have already done this, you can log in and um, go to applications and projects and start a new infrastructure application. You will have to sign in. Um, for those of you that don't have a WorksWise account number, you will need to go through OPWC. Nick Rose, who is our program rep, and his contact information is at the end of this PowerPoint. And uh, make sure you get the login um, information that you need. It doesn't take long to get that. Don't wait until September 14th to get that login information though, because that's the due date, right? So give yourself plenty of time. And um, let's see, um, those of you may see your names already in there. And then you can go to, let's see, I wonder if I can sign in, Allison Ball, there I am. So project name, test, project type, uh, bridge culvert, are multiple subdivisions involved? Uh, let's just say yes, because that way, that's how it'll know to look for that. Let's see, I'm Cuyahoga County and 44115, confirm. And then you can follow the instructions. Um, I'll go through this again. There's project information, project financial information. You can either um, click on, uh, oh, the, in, the eyes tell you what they're looking for and um, edit the project information, edit project financials. This is how you can get into it and just type as you go through, so. Um, and again, if you have any questions as you're preparing um, with OPWC uh, WorksWise, you can email Nick Rose or myself and we can work it, um, through this with you. So 
Um, again, it's very similar to the old paper uh, versions. It'll ask you if it's new in expansion, the project schedule. If you go to project schedule and your construction date is in um, 2025, you should get a, a, an alert or a red ink um, noting that this is not eligible for um, this year. They ask for project information, user information, project description, project officials, and then you have to upload all your required attachments. And um, OPWC has, or WorksWise has the list of the required attachments for District 1. It might be different for every um, district. Um, for, for District 1 and um, OPWC, we're requiring the certified authorizing legislation, the local match, um, please note that the local match certification letter needs to match the um, amounts in your financial information section. So double check that certification of loan repayment. Again, make sure that match uh, detailed engineer's estimate and the useful life and the cooperative agreement if it's a joint project. And we also require maps and photos. So again, um, I took you to WorksWise and how to get that. And again, create new uh, record. And um, here are some WorksWise resources. So you will need to use the WorksWise to upload applications, manage projects, and as well as submit disperse requests. So OPWC is all electronic right now. Um, I, they have a PO box, but I would just email and work with them electronically. Like I said, you may need a login to WorksWise and um, you can um, request a login going to the WorkWise training site on um, the Ohio Public Works Commission website. They have um, training for application submittal so you can watch the videos. And they also have disbursement training videos. So again, um, does anybody have any questions on the OPWC WorksWise? Are there any chats at all here? Huh. I don't see any, so I'll keep going. Because the next part is the county, uh, the the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee Supplement. So again, this is on the grant programs page and their current program year. So this year, um, the methodology and the criteria are the same. Uh, the only difference is in the points. So, um, whoops, go back. The access to funds is now six points and we'll show you that a little bit later. So it's out of 202 points. So the percentages are skewed, but they're pretty much, if you round up, they were the same as, as they were before. Um, so uh, again, we are trying to spread the money um, throughout the district and giving everyone a chance to get uh, some funding. So the Dopwick application supplement, I'm going to go through all the different parts and I'll these will just light up as we go through them. So primary infrastructure, you must submit one application supplement based on the primary infrastructure project. So if you're redoing a road and replacing the water lines, what is the primary reason for the project? Is it that you have to rip up the water line, uh, I'm sorry, rip up the road to replace the water lines um, or your the road is bad and since you're ripping it up, you may as well replace the water. So what is driving that project, right? And don't confuse the primary infrastructure with the infrastructure or project type. An OPWC application, the project type is determined by the highest financial um, contribution, whether it's for road or water, whereas this, what is the main thing driving the need for the project? So, and these are radio buttons on the application supplement, and there's a supplement, specific supplement for each um, uh, type, whether it's 
bridge, road, or culvert for water supply, wastewater, and stormwater. And you'll see why when we go through that a little bit later. But the radio buttons only allow you to check one. The secondary infrastructure components, you can check as many as you want. So this is not a radio button, it's just a check. Um, but we do ask you to provide a brief description of the work for secondary infrastructure. Um, so there are certain things that uh, applicants often list that we don't consider secondary, such as uh, the catch basins. And you can see that down here, catch basins adjusted to grade or installing under drains um, with new curb are not considered a separate stormwater project. That is something that you would have to do uh, for the road project anyway. So again, give us a brief description of what the secondary work being done and to the secondary components. So the project description. Again, you gave a shorter project description in the OPWC WorksWise section, um, and you provided the location. We're asking for this again. So we asked for the project location and limits. If you have more than um, five, just um, add an extra page with the rest of them. Uh, provide a map that clearly shows the limits. Um, but the reason we're asking for this information again, especially in this Excel format, is so that we can map them. Uh, this is for site visits. This is for showing where uh, the projects are getting um, funded. Um, and it's a great visual representation. So we appreciate you putting that in uh, a second time in a different way. Again, the project description, you provide a very small blurb and that becomes the um, section in your project agreement. In the supplement, we're giving you more than the 500 characters or however many it is in WorksWise to really um, bring your point across. So these are million dollar projects and uh, these should be a million dollar applications, right? This is your chance to really describe the, what's going on with the existing infrastructure um, and why it needs to be changed um, and the proposed changes and how those proposed changes will change the current condition. Um, your project description will also require the engineer's plan status certification and project name. Um, for those of you um, uh, that are preparing small government um, information, there are points associated with the plan status certification for small government, um, but this is just for evaluation purposes and required by law. So um, it's not the same as small government, but the information is the same. So keep that in mind. Um, for road bridges, um, and culvert projects, we need a two-year maintenance of effort form. Applicants must submit a history of investment on road and bridge projects uh, that provides the last two years. So project name, funding codes, is it pending? Did you complete it? The total cost and um, the years, the last two years. So users. Um, Again, we're looking at um, how many people are using the infrastructure component. So there's um, roads, bridges, and culverts, or sewer, septic, water, and wastewater. And we'll go over both of them. Uh, again, we're looking at, at different numbers. So for roads, bridges, and culverts, we're looking at ADT, the count you are, and the count source. And that's also described in the applicant manual um, and the sewers and septic water and wastewater, we're looking at the number of households. So for road bridges and culverts, we're looking at for ADT from TIMS. Uh, if you're doing your own count, it should have that engineer's um, seal or go through the County Department of Public Works. So um, for road bridges and culvert, this year, this is new. Indirect users will be considered for projects that have a public transit route on over half of the project limits. Projects with um, verified public transit route will receive an extra point. 
up to the maximum of 10 points. Um, maps and or drawings must be provided uh, clearly identifying and delineating the indirect users. And here is a sample that was provided in a previous application, even though we weren't giving points for it. So there's the project location um, included on the RTA map. So again, sewer, septic, uh, water, and wastewater, we have, uh, we're going by households. So again, provide the, the maps showing clearly the, the project area and the number of households. And for indirect users um, will be considered uh, only if the applicant demonstrates that the sewer or water line being repaired benefits a larger area than the residents on the street. That is the sewer water line as part of the community's overall distribution system. So again, provide the components, the count type, the count, the count source, and the maps and or drawings must be provided. So here, sewer, septic, water, wastewater, you can see um, here's the project location and here is the, um, the larger area. And again, in this one in the lower right hand corner, we have the project area is the, the dark lines. And then this is the um, supporting area. Um, and here are how the points are awarded. It's based on the primary infrastructure. We have um, the water supply, wastewater, and stormwater. This is households, water and wastewater treatment plants obviously have a bigger um, footprint. So um, you can see that and the road, bridge, and culvert. And again, and all user scores have a maximum of 10 points. So if you have over 300 households um, on your water line, but you still have more, um, you've maxed out at 10. And same with um, the wastewater and water treatment plants and also with the road, bridge, and culvert. If you already have your ADT over 20,000, but you have the public transit route, um, we will, like the point will show up in, in our long scoring thing, but it maxes out at 10 points when it comes to the actual adding up of the score. Infrastructure age, we're looking at the original construction year, provide proof of age, provide the year of the last major improvement and describe the last major improvement. If you're not sure if uh, your last improvement is major or minor, we do have descriptions of that in the applicant manual, um, which is available on our website. So um, points are based uh, again on that. And here you can see it, it's determined by the project type and the useful life. So 17, 14, Again, if your infrastructure is at five years old and is falling apart, eek, um, that's not good, but uh, you won't get as many points. Um, so, or not five years old, but yeah, I guess five years old. Infrastructure condition. Now we're getting into the meat of the points here. Um, what's driving the projects, um, the infrastructure condition and health and safety. So condition is based on the amount of deterioration within the defined project limits. Um, and we're gonna ask for supporting evidence or rationale. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but closed or not operating um, is unusable, dangerous or unsafe. The primary components have failed. Imminent failure, the infrastructure is function functioning at seriously diminished capacity. Um, and failure is anticipated um, or critical. The infrastructure is functioning at diminished capacity. Repair or placement is needed to maintain, maintain integrity. Um, so again, when you get down to poor, fair, and good, remember that this is a very competitive program. If this is preventative maintenance, um, even though it's less money to, to prevent this, um, and, and will help make the infrastructure last longer. 
um, it's the these top three that are really going to um, drive the points and, and get you into the funding range. So um, some of, of course, we're asking for pictures to show. We will go out and um, look at it. Uh, certainly, um, when we're looking at bridges, you can see if uh, there's weight limits posted, um, that's not functioning um, as it was intended. So um, uh, pipes that aren't round, um, it's not good. So use that. We'll look at um, reports, uh, pavement condition reports, the sewer reports, the video reports, um, and the water um, water main breaks. Um, we're looking um, for all that kind of written as well as uh, pictorial um, evidence supporting documentation. So the um, infrastructure condition of the bridge culverts and roads, we're looking again for the pavement condition rating, the structural defect or the general appraisals, the rating, the source, and the year. Please make sure that uh, these are um, current documents you're submitting for the sewer septic water and wastewater. You have um, the number of sewer line breaks or flooding events. Um, the uh, Cuyahoga County Board of Health they have a septic system rating. Um, they also rate the um, combined sewer overflows, um, storm sewers, again, um, line breaks, inflow and infiltration events and flooding events, and wastewater and water treatment, number of um, your violations, MPDES, the National uh, Pollution Discharge um, in the previous 10 years and um, the overall break weight or C factor for water mains. And um, describe the actual condition of the pipes, indicate the frequency of water main breaks and provide a five-year break rate. And we give you the, um, the equation to use in the applicant manual and the applicant supplement. So, um, you know, again, just checking off that your infrastructure is imminent failure or failure, um, you, you've got to prove it. Tell us the story. Pretend we don't know anything about this and, and provide as much as you can. Well, when I say that, don't go overboard. Um, uh, we don't need 800 pages. <laughs> um, that's going to be hard to, to find everything that we're looking for. So be concise um, about it, but definitely tell your story. So, here is how the points break down. 45 points um, was the most. And again, zero. If you have no supporting documentation, again, that it, we can't prove anything. So again, it's, it's going to um, be based on not just what you check off, but what you submit. And again, we're also looking each year to how the different road projects compare to the other road projects, how the different water lines compare to the other water lines. So keep that in mind you, as well when you're preparing your applications. Health and safety, um, that is our largest point getter. Um, again, we're looking at documented health and safety problems with multiple critical factors to be continuous with severe. Um, the nature of the problem warrants additional consideration and the project will greatly reduce or eliminate the health and safety risks. So your health and safety points, it's not just based on how bad it is, but are your um, repairs and replacement going to fix the health and safety problem. If there's a problem with a, a blind curve, but all you're doing is repaving the road, is that really gonna change the issues that, with that curve or the sight lines? So again, we're looking for not just what's happening, but how the project is gonna address the health and safety issues. Um, in the actual supplement, um, it's a full page and there is room for you to um, put a little bit more information about your health and safety issues. So this is for road, bridge, and culvert. 
please, if you're citing crashes, um, provide the crash rate per million vehicle miles traveled. We provide the equation to use in the applicant manual. Um, use that, show your math. Um, and then again, if it's a uh, level of service or operating conditions, any of these, and you have more information in your supporting documentation, this is where to uh, put what it is that we should be looking for and where to find it in the supporting documentation. Uh, for instance, please see attachment G, page 36 in, you know, the safety report or level of service report, you know, that kind of thing. So um, direct us where to find um, the information that backs up your claims that um, these uh, are causing problems. So again, for health and safety, road, bridge, and culvert, uh, use your TIMS uh, mapping, the transportation information mapping system. Um, if you are citing fatalities, um, definitely include a traffic crash report. Um, and again, if there's 200 traffic crash reports, we're not going to review all of them, but for the ones that you are saying, this is the reason we can't have this, uh, we need, or we need to fix this condition, or this actually, it's the health and safety issue, then um, provide that report. And then describe the safety deficiencies and provide the information that the health and safety issue will be reduced by the proposed project. So, Again, this is your opportunity to tell the story. Um, don't wait for the appeal to tell the story. Get it in at the um, upfront so that you don't need to appeal. Let us know. Um, and again, like I keep saying, pretend that we don't know what's going on um, and let us know. So it's very similar for sewer, septic, wastewater, and water. It's just that the um, what we're asking for is different. Is there um, findings, orders, mandates, flooding um, with structural and or property damage? And again, if there's pictures, tell us where to find the pictures. If there's reports, uh, tell us where to find the reports in the larger application. Um, you know, I do think that we actually added uh, one for the water main break. So no, that's for condition. That's right. Condition is separate from the health and safety and the, and the service capacity issues. Keep that in mind. So um, we will uh, get some technical assistance for sewer, septic, wastewater, and water from the Cleveland Department of Water. Um, we're asking um, all applicants whether they have their own water department and, their, and um, use their own water lines um, to fill this out. Um, it's the Cleveland um, Water Department Suburban Water Main Renewal Project Solicitation Sheet. Um, so this allows us to give a somewhat consistent and uniform evaluation across the board. Um, the water department will review these, and but they do acknowledge that they, that it is not in their service district. So um, same with the uh, Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Um, we'll look at them and we compare it um, to their um, municipal uh, stormwater program. And uh, we also uh, use our partners at the County Board of Health um, for their sewage treatment system evaluation form or their comprehensive um, outfall summary reports. Um, so uh, if you need to be connected with any of uh, these partners to get more information, certainly feel free, free to reach out to me. So I am just noticing the crash reports contain personal information of those involved in the incident. Should these sections be blacked out to comply with privacy concerns? Um, Eva, that's an excellent question. 
Uh, we haven't seen too many of them blanked out. Um, these are public record, um, but again, the um, pertinent information is um, what caused the accident. So uh, I think that that would be either way. And I would ask uh, Ernie, Tony, or Angela to unmute and chime in on that. I would agree they are public records. We typically don't see them blanked out, but if there's a, a concern or a comfort level on the applicant's part that they wanna see it blanked out, I would have no objection to that. I don't think any of the other uh, staff members would either, as long as the important information was still clearly available. Great, thanks Angela, much appreciated. I agree with you, Angela. Um, if they need to redact any, um, say even the name of the person, we're looking more at the information that was involved in the accident itself. We're not concerned with, with anything else on that report. So if they wanna redact that stuff, that's acceptable. And look, if we receive something that's redacted that we think is necessary, we can also contact you to get that information. Good point, Ernie, thank you. So, and again, like the road, uh, bridge, and culvert health and safety section, we do ask you to describe in detail, uh, and this is your, again, your chance to tell the whole story, the safety deficiency, and provide information that the health and safety issue will be reduced by the proposed project. And like I said, you know, the health and safety is, um, the most points, so 55, 50, 45, 35. And again, if you're submitting something with a minor potential problem, maybe this isn't the round of funding for you. So again, um, you know, you can look at, you might have multiple projects that you're thinking of considering and you can self-score and look at and see what would be most competitive. So local match, um, the local match includes um, two different um, streams of funds as defined by the Ohio Vice Code. So other project funding is um, match from say ODOT or the uh, sewer district or the Cleveland Water Department or any state or, or um, federal program that you're getting mon money to fix your infrastructure. Ability and effort to finance is what is the, um, uh, the community um, adding to the pot for the, um, to put that in. Uh, I will point out that loan, uh, if you do a grant loan combo, it can um, only be through SKIP, right? So you can't do an LTIP. Um, local transportation improvement program and a skip loan. OPWC typically will not um, offer those. So, um, but if you are using loan as, um, you can use that as a match and it would go into other project funding. Uh, and again, oh, you know what? Line I, it's I should have realized this. This is from the old form. I will need to do this, redo the this section. Um, but this is the combination of all the subtotal local resources. Um, and I will find out what it is in the WorksWise and make sure that you know how to self-score this. So, and then same thing with the loan incentive. Um, Typically, and I don't, I don't blame anyone, the grant money is uh, the most coveted money and it, it, it goes fast, but the loan, we have a lot of money to give away. We have a lot of money coming back from all these projects um, starting to repay the district. So um, please give that a consideration. And there was a time when the loan money just kept adding up and adding up, so now, um, we award points to applicants that request a loan as a percentage of the total estimated cost. 
So furthermore, if the DOPWIC awards all the grant money and has loan money remaining, the DOPWIC will offer a loan in the amount um, requested as a grant. So um, I know many of you on this um, uh, webinar have had that situation happen. It's still a, a pretty good way to get your infrastructure fixed up. So, um, and again, it's uh, the percentage of the loan to the overall uh, times 10. Um, and I will make sure that this actually gets um, uh, revised and put up a revised manual or at least uh, an information page at, and uh, let you know that. So we'll, we'll work on that um, tomorrow. And um, so access to funds. So again, um, like I said earlier, we've changed this one. We didn't change how we look at it. You know, when was the last time you were awarded a project? Was it in the last two years, last three to four years, last five to six years, or seven years or more? Um, all bridge projects are exempt from access to funds. Um, and that means all projects will receive the total of six points. Um, and this is the um, uh, projects that haven't been funded or haven't received fundings in the last seven years or more will get six points, five to six years, um, four points, uh, two years, uh, three to four years is two points and one to two years is zero. And you'll see I've changed it all to um, round numbers. Um, so uh, the year that you got the funding, um, think about that. And then there is also a table in the applicant manual that shows you what your community, um, it, your points are. Now that will change if it's a multi-jurisdictional project. We'll look at if it's half in um, one community and half in another, we'll take the, the, oh no, that's for economic health, not for access to funds. This is only based on the applicant that's going into the project agreement. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So that's down here. So access to fund is just based on the applicant. Community and economic development. So indicate whether the project is a community development project or an economic development project. Um, community development projects are considered to be one that will develop unutilized or underutilized land and preserve or enhance a neighborhood or an existing commercial corridor. Economic development projects are considered to be ones that will develop unutilized or underutilized land for private development that will create new jobs and increase the value of the adjacent land. And points will be awarded in only one category. So um, it can't be both a community and economic development. So this whole section right here is a radio button. So if you click infrastructure project is located in or along an existing commercial district and then come here and try to say that the project is required for new economic development, it will take the, the check mark out of here and move it to here. So it's only gonna be in one. And again, here's how the points are distributed. If it is, if the project is needed to redevelop the, the parcels into a community asset, it's three. Um, if it's located in or along an existing commercial district, it's two. Or if it's a neighborhood preservation project, it's one. Um, speculative development project or one that will cause the transfer of jobs from one community to another is zero. Um, and same thing with economic development. If it is required um, to turn the parcel into an economic development asset, um, new commercial office industrial three. Um, if it is required for just um, office um, industrial manufacturing two. And if the project is needed for new commercial development on undeveloped land one. Regional collaboration. This criteria is based on local share contributions by other communities or the county, Department of Public Works in District 1. 
points will be based on the information provided in the multi-jurisdictional projects table in the application supplement. And this is right up at the top. So if you are working with other communities, if you're going across the, the borders, or if you're combining with the Department of Public Works, put the municipality or, and in this case, um, the county isn't a municipality, but put the County Department of Public Works in the percentage of the project. And again, applicants must provide the required cooperative agreements indicating a subdivision's financial participation before January 17th. This allows um, us to know that you are ready for when the DOPWIC meets on January 24th, a week later, that your all the paperwork is submitted to OPWC and they can um, um, recommend that project for funding. So is the applicant collaborating with other subdivision? It's yes or no. Um, and again, it looks like this um, section of road could be a municipal border and only one half was paved. Um, economic health, here is where I was getting ahead of myself. We're looking at the economic health criteria. And uh, currently we're looking at the most uh, current per capita income and the percentage of households below poverty from the US Census Bureau um, American Community Survey, five-year estimates, uh, 2015 to 2019 is the data that we will be using. And um, a couple, this is what I was about to say before for the wrong criteria. The Department of Public Works will be awarded economic health points based on the owner of the asset. Um, so uh, the Department of Public Works does not own the roads. Uh, they do own the bridges. So if you are partner, if the county is working um, in the community, we will look at that community's economic health data. A multi-subdivision project score in economic health will be based on the project percentage of the partnering communities as provided in the project description section, um, which I had up here. So that's where we're gonna look at the percentage of the projects. Um, here's the breakdown of the points. And just like the uh, access to funds, we do have a table with all the communities, including the Department of Public Works in the county, um, and the scores, so you, it's just a lookup table. You should be able to figure out your um, um, economic health score. And again, it's a maximum of 25 points. And you should also be able to figure out if you are working with other communities, how it is. Again, if you need help pre-scoring that, feel free to contact us. So coordinated infrastructure projects, um, if you are, um, tearing up the road uh, for any reason or replacing the water lines. Uh, this uh, points will be awarded for trying to get everything done um, at the same time in order to capitalize on the infrastructure investments. So um, this is a maximum of four points. So even if you um, mark off um, all six, extra ones, uh, you still can only get four. Um, and again, we will be looking at the brief description of the work for secondary infrastructure components. And we also will look at um, the engineer's estimates to verify that that work is being done. So uh, the, I already said that, um, the DOP will award one point um, in order, yep, I see. I'm getting ahead of myself already. Um, and the last criteria is the generation of user fees. Uh, the proposed project will be reviewed to see if revenue in the form of user fees is generated, is determined by their very nature. Utility projects and treatment plants do indeed generate user fees for general revenue. Um, and these include wastewater treatment plants, water treatment plants, water transmission lines, sanitary sewer interceptors. Um, and so we will use a project type selected on the uh, project type and the works wise application will determine the points. 
So basically road bridges and culverts uh, will get the five points as they uh, are not generating those fees like the utilities. So are there any questions on the supplements? Q&A, looking in the chat. All right, well, I hear crickets, so I'm gonna go on um, the small government program. Um, the small government program has $20 million. Uh, it's a second chance for those smaller governments. This, um, even though the districts will select the projects that get sent down to Columbus, the OPWC Small Government Commission reviews projects submitted statewide and selects the projects for funding based on the Small Government Commission criteria. Um, applicants are given a 30-day cure period for small government applications. Um, I know some districts will allow uh, the, their small governments to cure it during the initial application period. Um, if that happens, they don't get to do that again um, when they go to Columbus. So um, for District 1, we let uh, OPWC contact you about that 30-day cure period. Project selection um, is not in 2022. It, oh, it is May 12, 2022. I did double check that. Um, and all the agreements, whether it's small government or the uh, regular DOPWIC projects will be sent out July on or around July 1st of 2023. So the small government commission application checklist, um, you will, there's a form for um, uh, the, or a, uh, a place on OPWC WorksWise to check if you're small government. And if you are, uh, you might be required to submit extra um, or upload extra supporting documentation. And uh, the reason it's not a required document is if it becomes a required document, everybody would need to submit that. So make sure you fill in and upload all of the required documentation for the Small Government Commission. I do have to say for District 1, we have almost everything in here um, except for the um, waste water and wastewater ability and uh, Effort supplement form. I believe we have everything else included in our uh, evaluation. Um, so in order for the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee to determine which el eligible applications will be the most competitive, uh, those applications will also be pre-scored according to the small government app, um, methodology. We will not score ability and effort Again, because that is based on the finances and there's a 30 day cure period. Um, so uh, instead of 100 points, we'll be looking at 90 points. Um, double check the infrastructure program, small government website checklist um, and make sure you have everything. So um, there's the water and wastewater ability and effort supplement that I was talking about. So you'll have to fill this out and upload that. Um, the, what's new for small government communities this year is the DOPIC Small Government Subcommittee is going to assign the District 1 priority points to five of the seven top projects at the DOPIC Small Government Subcommittee meeting in order to maximize the competitiveness of the District 1 projects to be funded. So for instance, if uh, of the five projects, uh, your project ranked number one um, and it scored well above what seems to be the average for scores for the last couple of years, um, the small government subcommittee might assign you a different priority 
in order to bump up other projects and maximize um, the competitiveness so that we can get the most district one small government projects um, uh, funded at the state level. So um, again, this is gonna happen at that small government subcommittee meeting that will be um, on January 24th. So um, if you have questions about that or want to address the small government subcommittee, it is a public meeting. So keep that in mind. So that's different this year. So, um, and again, the top priority will get the 10 points and it goes down to six points um, and then submitted at the state level. So the projects this year are due on September 15th by 4.30. Um, the, OPWC WorksWise um, uh, will stop accepting applications at 4.30 p.m. on September 15th. So, um, you know, now it's up to them uh, and, and their time clock. So again, give yourself plenty of time to uh, get everything uploaded and submitted. Um, but again, make sure that a PDF, a full PDF copy of the electronic information is submitted as well. A preliminary project ranking uh, will be published on the county planning website. This is a little different. Uh, we usually try to get it done right before Thanksgiving um, and it's always been rushed. Um, so now um, we're not gonna ruin anyone's holiday. Uh, we're just gonna do it after. So December 2nd this year is when, early December is when we're gonna list the preliminary project rankings. Um, and then you have a chance for appeal. Appeals are due um, a week later on December 9th. Um, to appeal um, a project, you'll have to list the criteria, criteria that you're appealing and the reason why you think it was scored or misscored or scored incorrectly, um, please remember you cannot um, put any new information that wasn't included in the original application. Um, and uh, again, a lot of times these appeals come in with great explanations that would have been very, very helpful in the original application. So when you review your application and your points, think about, you know, how could this be um, scored lower and how would I fight it up ahead of time? So um, uh, the DOPWIC staff will review the appeals and make recommendations on the appeals. So remember, uh, if we um, post revised scores, um, and thus revised project rankings, uh, that is not final. The DOPWIC makes the final uh, decision on the appeals and thus the final project ranking. So the final project ranking meeting this year is Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. So I guess it's next year. Um, and uh, they'll determine the recommendations for SKIP, LTIP, loans, contingencies, um, and appeals, uh, and they will approve the project rankings. And then um, subsequent to that, the District 1 recommendations will be finalized in OPWC WorksWise. The small government ranking, uh, the DOPWIC small government subcommittee will meet on January 24th, 2023, um, right after the DOPWIC meeting and review the small government rankings. They will assign the district priority points and determine the small government uh, projects, the top seven projects that will be sent uh, or submitted via Ohio Public Works, WorksWise, small government, uh, and um, then it goes to small government. The emergency program has $12 million per year should pose an immediate threat to health and safety. Um, it could be a natural disaster, uh, it could be an infrastructure disaster. Um, it's uh, not for delayed maintenance, 
or something that was foreseen. Uh, it's also uh, not for preventative maintenance and it is submitted directly to OPWC. Contact Nick Rose and copy uh, the liaison. And, and then it is uh, Director Bailiff, OPWC Director's discretion to approve any emergency funding. Here are some examples of uh, where the emergency funding has gone to. So uh, you definitely can see that there is a, a need to um, uh, fix this right away before things get worse. So OPWC, the project agreements actually get released on the in 2023 electronically from WorkWise. Um, all applicants have to e-sign the project agreements from email link. Uh, so make sure that uh, whoever your signatory is either is on the um, WorksWise or you are communicating with them regularly. Um, loan agreements, e-sign promissory note after CEO signs the project agreement. Um, and notification of disbursement method uploaded to WorksWise. Any questions, email Nick Rose. So changes to project officials. Um, it is important OPWC has correct email addresses. Um, the project agreements will be emailed to the project officials listed in the application. So definitely make sure um, that uh, you have that updated. And again, all that requires is a note to Nick Rose and or myself. So again, if the project CEO changes from the time of the application to the release of the agreement, contact your program representative to get it updated. So once the project agreement is e-signed, you are free to proceed with construction of your project. Um, Again, if you start anything uh, before the project agreements, it will not be reimbursed. Keep that in mind. Uh, to ensure the contractor you have selected will be paid in a timely manner, um, it is the community's responsibility to make sure the contractor is in the state pay system. And you can check their um, status on the OPWC website. Um, and disbursement funds, you can log into WorksWise to submit disbursement requests, include detailed invoices, proof of payment is required for reimbursement, and you can also follow the payment status on the OPWC website. Again, if you have any questions about this, um, Nick Rose would be happy to help uh, inform you uh, about that. One last thing. Um, that we've been seeing, and, and this is a statewide um, issue, um, estimates, inflation, and bids. And I, I'm assuming that this is nothing new uh, to those of you working in the field, but how does this impact your OPWC award? Well, um, there's a couple options that OPWC recommends, and that is to withdraw and reapply and for a future round of funding, find a supplemental funding source. Um, you can see if the district has any leftover loan funds um, or cut back on the project scope. Both of these options require approval at the district level. Um, but also ODOT maintains cost data and economics information on their website. Um, so, and they have been um, facing this and are trying to keep uh, folks updated on, on um, that. So um, the, the application schedule, this is posted on our website. Uh, the application materials were made available on Monday, July 11th. I will tell you that I went through, I do see a question, so I'll get to it after I view the schedule. Um, I did see that uh, there were some issues with the uh, application supplement forms. So they were reposted recently. So if you already saved it, you might wanna go back into our website 
and receive it. Uh, the preliminary project ranking um, will be released Friday, December 2nd. Project appeals are due a week later. And the important dates is the selection, um, and that is Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. Um, and we have a month. Um, and all these dates are subject to change. Oh, that's a Nick Rose question, Monica. Uh, so Monica Barkowitz asks, does the community have to wait for the project agreement to be executed to bid the project, or we just have to wait for actual construction? Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, folks on here um, that are, uh, let's see, does any panelist or even attendee, if you raise your hand, if you have experience with this. Uh, Allison, this is yes. Ernie Zitt, um, from okay. the OPWC staff. Yes. Uh, it's my understanding that you can bid the project. Um, you cannot award it until you get the agreement executed. So um, that's my understanding. We can, we can check with Nick. To, yep. um, to verify that, but I believe you can go through your bidding process. You just cannot award it yet until you get the agreement signed. Great, thanks, Ernie. I knew that there would be uh, somebody on here that was familiar. And um, so uh, um, that's the end of my presentation, but I am gonna go uh, out of the, PowerPoint and just show you where to find some things on our website. Um, uh, so are there any more questions? Okay, I don't see any hands raised. Uh, there is a question, uh, just a thank you. Okay, great. Um, well, um, again, this presentation, uh, the video, as well as uh, the slides, and I'll have them um, updated, especially the how to score your loan, because um, I want to find it in OPWC WorksWise. Um, but I'm here uh, to help you with your applications. If you want us to review something uh, for either eligibility or how we think it could pre-score, um, we're, um, we're here for you. Um, and um, Nick Rose, our program representative, um, is also available. Uh, note that there's no address here anymore. They are all electronic. Um, email um, is still the best way. Uh, to get a hold of us. And um, so, and again, if you're new to the WorksWise system and you need uh, your login uh, number or ID, definitely reach out to Nick Rose and myself at your earliest convenience. And uh, I'm gonna stop share for a sec and uh, say thank you. Um, to everyone, um, again, this may not be new, but I am just gonna go back uh, really quickly. Screen there. And I'm still in the show, okay. Uh, wait, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, there you go. Um, now I'll screen share again. Thanks for your patience. You'd think after two years that I'd be a pro at this. All right, so again, um, here's the um, OPWC uh, WorksWise home. And um, Let's see, where's grant programs? Here it is. So uh, the county planning um, grant program is 
under the services, at the very bottom, and the state infrastructure programs are the first um, ones we have here. So here's the current program year. And this is where you can find everything and the, all the forms are here. Um, and here is the road and bridges um, supplement. So again, it's a fillable PDF form. And you can see, and what I wanted to show you is the section for health and safety. Yep, right here. So provide crash rates as described and you can check and write so it's not just a checklist. So that's where you find that one. And the septic and stormwater. Is, um, again, very similar. It doesn't have that two-year maintenance of effort as that is only for the bridge uh, and road and culvert projects. So, but very similar. So um, if you have a combined uh, project or coordinated infrastructure project and you want to um, show us uh, that there's equal issues or, or that you're taking in consideration that both infrastructure are bad and you wanna fill out that second supplement, include it in the supporting documentation, okay? We're only evaluating for the one uh, primary infrastructure. So, and then of course, Ohio Public Works Commission, if you go to district one, you can also have links to our method our methodologies and the district website, or just the infrastructure. Um, and here is uh, the WorksWise logging in for the first time. And of course, all of the advisories, if you have questions about um, any of these engineering costs, uh, certified uh, loan payments, all that kind of stuff, it's all available here. So, all right, uh, did I stop sharing? I think so. Uh, so if there's um, no other questions, I'm just gonna hang out for a little bit um, and uh, wish you all luck and we look forward to seeing your applications this year.